सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो एज पर योर डिमांड दिस इज द वीडियो रिलेटेड टू द नेटवर्क एनालिसिस फॉर थर्ड सेम बी ई सी थ्री जीरो थ्री दो आर हैविंग बैक लॉग फॉर दैम वी आर है ट्राइंग टू प्रोवाइड यू ऑल सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन सो दैट यू कैन पास एंड क्लियर दिस बैक लॉग ओके एंड वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट नोटिस रिलेटेड टू बैक लॉग इज द वी टी यू साइट हैज प्रोवाइडेड वन नोटिस दैट दो एंड ऑल आर हैविंग द बैक लॉग्स एंड दे आर विलिंग दैट दे के नॉट राइट द मेकअप एग्जाम सो यू कैन टेक दैट बैक लॉग विद यू फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेम एंड ट्राई टू क्लियर इट बाई राइटिंग द मेकअप एग्जाम ओके बट द थिंग इज वेन यू रीच द फोर्थ ईयर यू शुड बी ट्राइंग टू क्लियर ऑल द बैक लॉग्स ओके या सो इट्स यू शुड शुड नॉट बी वरिंग अबाउट एनी दो थिंग्स बिकॉज यू कैन टेक द बैक लॉग विद यू फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेम ओके दो आर हैव फेल्ड इन द सेकेंड सेमिस्टर एज वेल एज थर्ड सेमिस्टर बट द थिंग इज दैट बर्ड दैट यू वुड बी कैरिंग दैट बर्डन विद यू ऑल बिकॉज द बैक लॉग सब्जेक्ट्स अलॉन्ग विद द सब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द विच सेमिस्टर यू आर यू शुड बी स्टडिंग इट ऑल ऑफ दैम ओके बट वेन यू रीच द फोर्थ ईयर यू शुड बी क्लियरिंग ऑल ऑफ दैम ओके दैट्स ओनली द थिंग बट यू कैन कैरी द बैक लॉग्स विद यू ऑल ओके या But now let's discuss some of the important concepts related to network analysis. Okay, what and all are the questions? What and all type of questions they would be asking? One first question from uh, sorry, yeah, from module one, one question is fixed related to source transformation. Okay, they would be fixed. They would be asking related to source transformation. So this is not the circuit. So yeah, this uh, like these kind of uh, complex circuits they would be asking for source transformation. Okay, some of the important source transformation circuits. What you need to be doing is. Current source in uh, whether uh, in order to uh, we need to be reducing the terminals between A and A, A and B. The circuit we need to be reducing in such a way that we should be left with only one more single voltage source in series in between the terminals A and B. Okay, that thing we I have uh, we have discussed some of the rules. That is what we need to be doing is whenever we have voltage source in series with the resistance, we can convert it into current source in parallel with the resistance. Whenever we have a current source in par parallel with the resistance, we can kind of convert it into voltage source in series with the resistance so that we can parallelly add them. Add those two voltage source and convert it into a single voltage source. Okay. Similarly, if we have two current sources in parallel to each other, we can add those two current sources as well. Okay. It depends upon the direction. Okay. Whenever we have positive to negative or negative to positive, it is uh, opposite current sources flowing in opposite directions. We can we should subtract them always. Whenever we have the two current sources or voltage sources in same direction, okay, with the same polarity, we need to be adding them. Okay, like this, we should be reducing for uh, source transformation circuits. Okay, so here are some of the problems. So I'm just going to show you all of the problems here. This is the circuit question here, one by one. Okay, I've taken the re reduction by taking current sources in parallel. Okay, this is the circuit. So these are the steps here, one by one. Please note it down all the steps and try to solve it on your own. So this is one more example for source transformation. Okay, this is the circuit I've taken. Okay, I've reduced it in a current source. Uh, so these two are in current source in parallel with the resistance, right? So I've these two I've converted into voltage source in series with the resistance, and all the voltage sources I've added and added and subtracted and made it a single voltage source. So these two having the same direction, so we can add them. and whatever the answer we get we should be subtracting with this 8 volt because this is in opposite direction so that's why 20 plus 12 is 32 32 minus 8 is 24 and these two resistances are in series so we can add them and write it as 6 ohms 2 ohm plus 4 ohm then here now what we can do is we have one current source in parallel but we have we have here voltage source so convert this voltage source in series with current source to parallel so that we can add these two current sources and make it a single current source and finally one uh so resistance we have along with one current source so we have we should be converting it to a voltage source in series okay like this uh, this is one complex circuit here you can go through it okay i'm just going to scroll it like this so pause the video and go through it okay and one more question related to source shifting okay one question related to source shifting is must okay so this is some of the important notes related to source shifting and this is one problem related to source shifting where this source right Three volt source. We should be shifting in such a way that this three volt source should be vanished from here, and it should be divided to these two. Whatever the branches, it would be getting a uh, 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 joined, right? The, the, for those two branches, it would be getting. So here, this three volt, if it goes in this direction, it it will move here or else here also. So here, that three volt would be split to this branch as well as this branch. So like this, we can remove this uh, shift source from this position, and it should be, should be shifting it to other position. Okay, so like this, by using source shifting, we can reduce uh, this network. Okay, they would be asking in a particular circuit. They would be telling 
to use both source shifting as well as source transformation and to be solving the reduction okay so this was all about source shifting so one question related to conversion of star to delta delta to star okay this question is must okay star network this is a simple net delta network okay so whatever in order to convert this delta into star so these are the simple formulas what we need to be using so this is the derivation part here okay so please note it down i'm just going to scroll it like this okay and one the derivation related to conversion of star to delta right conversion of star to delta derivation they would be asking that's a must question okay consider we need to be considering z1 z2 z2 z3 and z1 z3 separately okay and these are the things we need to be deriving it in order to convert it into star to delta this derivation is must so i am just going to scroll it like this so please pause the video and refer it okay so this derivation is very very important okay so yeah, also one problem they would be asking related to conversion of star delta transformation one problem okay so please uh, uh, go make a revision of this problem as well so now get get to one more important topic related to mesh analysis okay in this module mesh analysis this is again one more important topic one problem related to mesh analysis would be asked okay that's a confirmed question that is they would be giving one circuit we need to be applying the loops and we will be solving okay for mesh analysis this is one simple problem for reference i'm just showing it to you all in order to find the values of currents okay we need to be using mesh analysis okay we are applying doing the uh, mesh analysis transformation by applying the kvl on uh, both the loops okay and applying the kvl we should be finding the values of current okay this is the topic about mesh analysis so what do you mean by super mesh is whenever we have any current source between two of the uh, loops for example this problem if you see here these are the two loops generated okay between two the, between these two loops we have one current source whenever we have a current source between any two loops and uh, that whole loops are the whenever that two loops would be joining together to become a single loop okay whenever we have any current source which is separating the two loops okay this is called the concept of super mesh okay separately we need to be writing the equation for super mesh and solving okay so this is all about super mesh and again one question would be fixed related to node analysis also okay node analysis one question would be fixed okay so please uh, note this down related to node analysis one question would be fixed so here in case of node analysis what we need to be doing is what the circuit they would be giving two nodes they would be marking it okay we need to be using the kcl in this for uh, rule in case of mesh analysis you need to be using kvl and here in this case we need to be using the kirchhoff's current law kcl and uh, solving for a uh, voltage as whatever the values of currents we get substitute it in terms of voltage okay by seeing the circuit by checking the branches here from this node the directions of current mark it and check for all the branch currents and all the values of the branch currents that is i is equal to v by r in general okay then uh, solve for nodes okay then try to find the value of voltages in this case okay you can refer this problem only for example this problem only you can refer it okay and this is the second problem related to node analysis so please refer this problem as well this is very very important related to node analysis so now let's get to module 2 that is network theorems okay we have many many theorems and i'm going to tell you some of the important theorems which you need to be learning okay so this is superposition theorem this statement they might be asking but uh, let's discuss some of the important ones so this one theorem is very important so this theorem you should be learning from this module that is millman's theorem okay its statement and its equations for vm and its proof as well we need to be considering the network and solving it so this is the proof for millman's theorem you can note it down okay so millman's theorem is one fixed question also one more fixed question is related to the maximum power transfer theorem this is very important and multiple times repeated question okay so this question before going to exam from this module you should be studying that is maximum power transfer theorem okay its statement and its derivation by taking the complex circuit this uh, uh, this maximum power transfer theorem only uh, states code whenever the circuit is in the complex state okay so please note it down this is the derivation of maximum power transfer theorem where we get the relationship of uh, maximum power transfer theorem as r is equal to rl whatever the load resistor we get is uh, equal to the input resistance which is applied to the circuit okay so this derivation is very important note it down okay and this is the maximum power which we are going to calculate using this condition p max is equal to i square rl 
then VTH square by RL, 2R square, 2RL square, and this is the equation for maximum power we get that is VTH square divided by 4RL. Okay, so this derivation is very important. Please note it down. Okay, related to maximum power transfer theorem. So next module is module three. That is uh, two port networks. So this is actually module five. Two port networks. Where here we are dealing with some of the important parameters. That is a uh, Z parameters, that is impedance parameters, Y parameters, admittance parameters, H parameters, hybrid parameters, and T parameters, transmission parameters, and they are also called as ABCD parameters. Okay, so this conversion of one parameter into other parameter, we need to be representing the equations for Z parameter in terms of uh, H, Y, and T parameters. Okay, the questions related to this would be asked. Okay, so please you can note it down as well. And from resonance part, okay. One uh, one question from the parameters part is conversion of all the parameters, uh, interrelationship between the parameters. That question would be asked. And from resonance part, what they would be asking is the series resonance uh, derivation. Okay, uh, derive a uh, derivation of a series resonance circuit. That is series RLC circuit derivation. What is the frequency obtained for a series RLC circuit using the impedance that is equal to V by I? Okay, then uh, solve this using series resonance circuit. Okay, this derivation is very important related to series resonance circuit. Okay, the final uh, equation which you obtain for series resonance circuit is F naught is equal to one by two pi square root of L C. Okay. The series LCR circuit resonance may be produced by either varying frequency or given constant value L and C or by varying either L and C or both given frequency. Okay, so this is the expression which we obtained here for a, a frequency that is resonance frequency for a, in case of a series resonance. Okay, so this uh, finding frequency related to series resonance circuit would be asked one fixed question. Okay, so please uh, note it down. And one more kind of resonance is finding the expression using parallel resonance. Okay, parallel resonating circuit, or it is also called as anti-resonance. Okay, a parallel circuit is said to be in resonance when applied voltage and resulting current are in phase. That gives the unity power factor condition. Okay, so this is the circuit here where the series, the R L R and L component would be in series along with one capacitor that is a, a capacitive reactant that is mentioned as X C. So this is the diagram of parallel resonance. And here is the derivation. Here you can take it. This is the derivation of uh, parallel resonance. Okay, so please note it. Note this derivation down. Okay, where this G plus J B is G is for conductance and S is for susceptance. Okay, then solving it for omega, that is the resonating frequency omega equal to omega A R. Okay, replacing that value of omega is equal to omega A R and solving it. And here this is the equation which we have obtained in case of parallel resonance. That is. F A R anti resonance anti resonating frequency is equal to one by two pi square root of one by L C minus R L square divided by L square. Okay, so this derivation is very important. So one derivation related to series resonance, one re related to parallel resonance from this module uh, is very important, and the conversion of uh, parameters that is interrelationship between X Y H and T parameters and conversion of H and uh, uh, relationship of H, H parameters in terms of uh, uh, x y and t parameters and x uh, like that interrelationship would be asked okay and from this chapter the questions related to series resonance and parallel resonance to find the frequency of uh, resonating frequency in case of series as well as parallel so it is important from this module okay so next module is laplace transforms and its applications okay from this one question is fixed related to the time domain uh, uh, waveforms uh, that is using a uh, different uh, functions that is one step function unit step function then uh, ramp function okay using step function and ramp function one problem is fixed asked okay where we would, they would be giving one uh, standard function in terms of waveform okay using step function and ramp function using that uh, separately you should be writing the waveforms for step function ramp function uh, this uh, for this type of question would be fixed asked for it so this question is there right find the laplace transform of the waveform shown in the figure this question I'm mentioning this question because this question itself is multiple times repeated question. Okay, so this question you can note it down. Okay, you need to find the Laplace transform. Here we have eight different values of f of t. Since uh, this first is this slope is for a uh, uh, ramp function. Okay, then uh, we have it is turning into constant. Okay, then it's turning into constant because we, so when we we have one uh, uh, constant, we have one uh, negative ramp function in order to turn it into constant. After that, we have one more uh, negative step function. Okay, it is going downwards, and from here we have one more ramp function. It is going upwards, and here we have two step functions. The negative step functions implement implement as uh, twice. Okay, before that, 
in order to turn it into constant uh, we have here we have one more ramp function okay like this we are having eight steps for this laplace transform separately substitute the values of uh, f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 f7 f8 whatever we have got okay then f of t then take the laplace transform of f of t in, in, in order to represent from time domain to h domain okay so this is the value of f of s what you are we are getting okay so please you can note it down this is a very important question multiple times repeated question in a previous uh, previous question papers this question so please note this question down so that's all i have tried my best to give some of the important uh, tips and some of the important concept which you need to be brushing up uh, before writing the exam of uh, network analysis i know that i have not explained in in detail but yeah because uh, the detailed explanation we have no we are not having any time to uh, explain in detail in detail so that's why how much important questions i think it might be coming for exam that in that way i have tra uh, tried to give you all okay so which and all of the concepts mentioned uh, whenever I, I do while this explanation whatever i have done which and all are the component uh, co concepts uh, uh, which would be appearing for exams that would be, i have i've told you all okay so that's why please uh, try to do it then uh, that's all for this session hope this video would be helpful for you all then uh, please like share subscribe and do comment down your opinion about how this video for you is useful for you all so that's all thank you